of us grew up in a religious background. Not all of us grew up going to church or revering God or, you know, relating to God. Uh, some of us, you know, honestly grew up as in the proper definition of the word heathen. Uh, some of us even criminal. But you know, there's one difference. There's one small thing that can make the difference. And that is a prayer of reverence. Welcome to the Shepherd's Heart and this particular series that we're doing called um, Dua, Prayers of the Bible. We are tracing our way through New Testament, through Old Testament, prayers of people who cried out to the Lord. The word Dua is a Swahili word, but also Hausa, uh, that means prayer, a, a desperate cry to the Lord. And today we have a very interesting character whose background was very irreligious. People in society knew, even the criminal justice system knew, and in fact he had been sentenced to death as a criminal. And the scene we catch up with in the, in the Gospel according to St. Luke in chapter 20, 23 is these two criminals that have been, you know, uh, sentenced to death, and in fact they've been given the full penalty uh, for, for their waywardness. And we are told that they are hanging on the cross and they began uh, this conversation among themselves, you know, and one of them began hurling insults to the man who was in the middle uh, cross, on the middle cross. Remember, it was Jesus on the middle cross and there were thieves, uh, two criminals to his side. And then this other thief, you know, uh, this other criminal says, hey, don't you even fear God? Yes, we are criminals. We are getting uh, our due penalty. But don't you even fear God to address him with some reverence, with, with some respect? It is true. We, we, are, we, are, we are bad. Uh, you, know, you know, bad, bad, bad. But don't we have some conscience that, that you can regard this, this, this man here, an innocent man who is getting the same penalty as we are, but not a criminal like us. And listen to what, then turning to Jesus, he says, chapter 23, verse 42. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replies, is, is profound. This, this dua is called the dua of the criminal on the cross. And this is how God answered this prayer, this dua. Verse 43, Jesus answered him, Truly I tell you, today, Tigaroshio, not tomorrow, today you will be with me in paradise. Remember, this is not somebody whose background betrayed much time in Sunday school. This is not somebody whose background of one who had shaded, you know, um, the doors of and darkened the doors of some cathedral or some synagogue or, or, or some holy place. No. He was by self-definition a criminal. I had a high school teacher who thought all of us in school were criminals. The only differentiation was what kind of crime you had. So he would walk into class and, you know, he misdressing all criminals. And so he would distinguish you by your kind of crime. Zagarare, magarare, forgerare, bagarare. All the different crimes that could come to his mind that could have been committed. This guy, by his own definition, by his own confession, was a criminal. But one who had been passed as criminal by the justice system. But one who had some, some small, you know, ounce of conscience and reverence and lets out this prayer, this dua. Remember me. When you come into your kingdom. Because this is, this is not your kingdom. That's why you're being nailed. They don't know who you are. When you return to your kingdom, let me tell you, he will be the man. And so remember me. He has many names. In fact, the most recent one is a nickname, Akech the Mayor. This is one of our sound and media uh, officers here at the church. 
And this is not his first time uh, in this uh, Shepherd's Heart Productions, most of the time behind the camera. But, but we, have, we, we have had this conversation before uh, in, the, in the previous episodes. And so let's welcome one more time Ted Akech. How are you doing? I'm doing well. Thank you for the opportunity. You look well. Uh, we thank the Lord. Okay. Yes. Tell us, uh, for those who never met uh, Akech the Mayor, mm -hmm. as you're now called in this building, uh, tell us a little about yourself and your impressions from that doer of the criminal on the cross. Um, my name is Ted Akech, as you've heard. Uh, I wasn't really named, is it for or after, whichever English you prefer to use, yeah. the mayor. I was actually, <laughs> it was something that my dad did, not inspired by the mayor. <laughs> uh, all the same, <laughs> we still share a name. Yeah. Um, about the prayer, my, my impression pretty much was uh, the two criminals at, at the cross is, is pretty much like what we do or what we go through on a day-to-day -day basis. Mm -hmm. Here is somebody who hasn't uh, gotten the revelation, so mm -hmm. to speak, uh -huh. of who he was being nailed alongside. Mm -hmm. and, and I would want to say maybe sometimes we might not, and I stand to be corrected, might not get what we really, really, really ask for mm -hmm. because we do not really understand who we are asking it from. Yeah. Because the one who understood who he was talking to asked mm -hmm. in accordance to who he was. An instance, if you're talking to the president, I mean, you would ask of things that you know he can do it. So you don't ask for peanuts or simsim. I mean, you don't ask for peanuts or little things. You yeah. ask for things that you know are within his graft. Yeah. And so he asked that I want to be with you. And it was granted in words. Mm. And for me, I think the issue there was, or even in our day-to-day -day lives, mm -hmm. is do we have revelation of Jesus Christ that we ask of things in his name? And this guy was a criminal, so it's not like he was ultra-religious. I don't think he had a grand view of God, but imagine the little he knew, he reverenced. And asking in accordance to the bigness, let me use that uh, word, of, of who he knew he was being nailed next to, he, he asked in that accordance like you're saying, and I hadn't really seen it that way, and it's, it's great, but... but your prayer life can't really rise above your knowledge or your appreciation of the grandness of God, mm -hmm. you know? And he asked, and he gets an instant answer. Well, can I ask? Go ahead. Do you think it was unfair to the other criminal? Okay. For in what him sense? not to have the revelation? Because I think for me in this particular instance, his problem was the revelation. Perhaps maybe if he understood who... Jesus yeah. was, he probably would have asked of the same thing. Yeah. So do you think it was unfair that he doesn't, was it unfair to him? Or okay. that's just the way it was supposed to play out? Okay. You ask an important question, and, and the verse that came to mind immediately you asked is, all creation declares that God is, so that man is without excuse. Now, I cannot blame uh, my lack of revelation to God if I am driving through life in such a hurry. And if you as a criminal, you don't have to be too imaginative to imagine uh, what consumed his life as he was driving up and down Gong Road. He wasn't seeing billboards. He wasn't noticing, ah, that tree was cut. His life was deal to deal, gain to gain, slice, you know, shave off a little. And with such a desire to gain, mm -hmm. with such a, a mindset of selfishness and aggrandizement, that he failed to slow enough. You know, uh, the Bible says uh, to be still and know that he's God, and it's coined in a song. Uh, we move too fast for us to see this is a clock moving. It, it, it must have a creator. It, it it just didn't big bang into being. 
and having missed all those signs, then he cannot say that there was somebody to blame for him not to realize this was not a criminal. And besides that, uh, a catch if I may say, mm -hmm. where is a place of curiosity and asking questions? Fine, he didn't have the revelation, but wasn't there opportunity for what are you in here for? Uh, 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 I don't know if you've ever been in, but I've been in uh, several times and not as a criminal. Uh, well, I don't know if I can say for, for breaking traffic rules. Uh, that, that's crime. Oh, well, it's not big time crime. It's breaking the law. And you know, you're put there with drunkards, with, you know, people who were doing bad things, you know, uh, robbers. You're all put in together waiting for your sentencing. You know, one of the common questions that criminals, I find in the three times I've been in that cell, what are you in for? There's such curiosity of, why are you in? Mine was unfair. But there is, we don't see any curiosity. He seems satisfied, I was a criminal. My friend over there was a criminal. And therefore, let's hurl insults to this guy. Wasn't there time to think, could it be? What if this Jesus they keep talking about? And my brother, my sister, who's watching uh, Akech and I from the comfort of, of your home, your office, or, or wherever you are, you could be at the park. Have you ever had curiosity to think, this Jesus they talk about, who is he? Are you in a place where your doer needs to be, remember me? Even with the little you know about the Savior, even, you know, regardless of your background is it time to pray that prayer that doer of the criminal on the cross it wasn't complicated it was remember me because on the other side of that prayer was a gracious one who said and says and answers prayer the shepherd's heart doer prayers of the Bible. Thank you for listening to us and God bless. Adua, adua.